sister, I'm going to take her. And then Abimelech had Sarah because of the lie. Don't tell me that because he told a lie. Do you have to tell a lie? That is the fire that we're talking about. Put it off. And then eventually God pledged the whole household of Abimelech because of that lie. You know, some people will say, but Jacob told lies. Jacob was a liar. Yes, I know. Would you like to have the consequence of what Jacob had as a liar? The lie he told to the father. How is it you have got it so quickly? Oh, the Lord brought it my way. And then he got the blessing. And then Esau came and said, my father, bless me. And Isaac said, who are you? And he said, I am Esau. Where is the person that took the blessing? Ah, it's Jacob. And then Esau said, I know what I'll do. Once my father dies, I'll kill that Jacob. And then the mother now came to the father and said, let this Jacob go away because, you know, there's trouble in the family because of that little lie. And then eventually, you know what happened? He went away. He spent 20 years in exile. You're talking about, you're talking about a Jacob. And you're saying, Jacob prayed and God made a change. Yes, I know. Jacob prayed and God made a change after suffering for 20 years. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. That's the reason the Lord is telling you. The little foxes, get rid of it. Don't give an excuse and say because Jacob told a lie, Abraham told a lie, this one told a lie, and God forgave them eventually. How about the things to go through and the trouble you see and what happens to your family after the lie and then eventually after 20 years now God delivers you and you know the only thing you remember is I will not let you go except you bless me after 20 years of suffering we can avoid that and we're going to avoid it I said we're going to avoid it I see you are getting tired an old man is still strong and standing and preaching. And the younger people there, you know, I say something in jail. They say, Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, you know, I'm going to, you know, so preach that, you know, after I'm through, you say, Thank God it's true. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We're looking at, we're looking at this um, Proverbs chapter 26 and we're looking at it now in verse 20 here. It says, where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So, where there is no tail bearer, the strife ceases as coals are born are to burning coals. Uh, so it says, wood to fire. So, is a contentious man to kindle strife. The Lord is just telling us that we need to take care of that little member. Keep that little member. That is the little tongue. Keep it under control. And then your life will be safe in Jesus' name. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 3. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. But he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. I don't want to have destruction. I will not have destruction. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 23. 21, 23. Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from trouble. Psalm 39 verse 1. Psalm 39. We're looking at verse 1. I said, I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep, I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. Here's the prayer we need to pray. We're looking at Psalm 141. Psalm 141, looking at verse 3. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth and keep the door of my lips. You see, now the Lord himself has taken us through all this. Number one, little foxes, let's get rid of them. Number two, little folly, let's get rid of that. Number three, little fire, let's put it out. Now, how do we do that? Whatever the consequence of little foxes, little folly, little fire in our lives. How do we neutralize all the consequences of that that leads us to 
the little faith, little faith. And if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, all the mountains of problems that have come upon our lives because of the little foxes and the little foley and the little fire, all those mountains of problems, the Lord will roll everything away. We're looking at Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. Matthew 17, verse 20. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, just a little faith tonight will do the work. It says, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say, Unto this mountain, remove hands to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. We're reading from verse 22. Have faith, Jesus answering says unto them, have faith in God. For verily, truly, certainly, without a shadow of doubt, I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou remote, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. I will have it. I said, I will have it. Verse 24, therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them what will happen? And you shall have them. I'm going to have something tonight. Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. We're reading verse 8. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. But... I thought we were going to read it. Now, you read that as if you are talking to the Lord. Like the centurion talk to the Lord. Picture the Lord standing before you. And then you have this mountain. You have this problem. What the little foxes caused. What the little folly has brought. And what the little fire has brought in your life, in your family, in your profession, your Christian life. And now the Lord is standing before you. And you picture him standing right there. And now you are saying, Lord Speak the word. Can you say that, Lord? Speak the word only. And my servant shall be healed. And my body shall be healed. And my family shall be healed. Do you really believe that? Do you really truly believe that? And you know why I'm asking you is because you know there are people, they say, until... I see the pastor and he sits down and we talk. You know, I just like to talk to him and we talk for hours. You know, some people are waiting for that. Well, it's good if you are waiting for I'd like to talk to you too, but look at the time. How much time do we have to talk? Take 30 minutes for each person. Just talk and talk. Let me part my heart, pastor, before you pray. We don't have too much time for that, but I know something can happen. If we just speak the word, speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. It has happened already. And the blessing of the Lord will be upon your life. But you know, before we pray, you are going to take a decision and do something about the little foxes and the little folly and the little fire. You get rid of them. After you've gotten rid of them, then I'm going to speak the word of the Lord into your life. And something great, wonderful, and marvelous will happen to you in Jesus' name. You want to stand up? Praise the Lord. Why don't you just close your eyes and then pray. You understand now the little foxes. You don't want to be a wise man, a wise woman. You want to tell the Lord what dangers you've gone through. And what terrible things you've gone through because of those little foxes. You've gone through life carelessly. You've gone through life just, just, just going around and... You know, you almost destroyed yourself because of the little, little foxes. The things are coming into your life. 
the philosophy, the false doctrine, the false prophets, the false religion. I say it doesn't matter. I just want to have an understanding. I just want to read what they say. You want to burn those erroneous materials, those materials of false doctrine. You want to burn them, destroy them. The little foxes. Do you see how Christ avoided Herod? How John lost his life? By giving counseling to somebody that didn't need the counseling. To a fox. To Herod. The wise. Take away. The little foxes. The little foxes that spoil. That destroy. Are vine. Check up your life and see those steps who have been taken without following through. Or what the scripture says. You run into this trouble, that trouble, that trouble. Sometimes because of your impatience. Like what Saul did. A little folly. A little foolishness. Like what David did. And thousands of people lost their lives. And then later he said, Lord, I've done very foolishly. We can avoid that. The impatience of Saul, I forced myself. We can avoid that. So you are deliberate, your lifestyle, you trust the Lord, depend upon the Lord from day to day. Every step you take, every word you speak, every relationship you build, very thoughtful, careful, cautious. And this little member of a tongue, the little fire. You don't misquote the Bible. Abraham lied. Jacob lied. Ananias, Sapphira lied. You seen all that to excuse those little little things you do you should have outgrown. Repent of and have a life that is free, free from little fire, little folly, little foxes. Repent and return fully to the Lord. Let be a permanent change, permanent repentance, so that your life now is clean and clear. Get out of trouble.
replace the little foxes with little faith. Replace the little folly with little faith. And replace the little fire with little faith. Then you regain everything you've lost. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say amen like you are still awake. Amen. Now that's great. Help me wake up. Eh? Those who are still sleeping with your amen. amen. You know, when you take that decision in your life and you say, Lord, the little folly, now I recognize. Little foxes, now I recognize. And the little fire, now I recognize. And we're destroying all those things tonight in Jesus' name. And then the problems that came into our lives. Do you believe in miracles? You believe God still answers prayers today? Where are you? Praise the Lord. Keep those hands up. The Lord likes to see those hands. Indicating you believe God answers prayer. And he'll answer your prayer. Yeah. Every desire of your heart, the Lord will fulfill. Yeah. And the promises of God will be yes and amen in your life in Jesus' name. Yeah. Do you believe a miracle is coming your way? Yeah. Are you waiting until maybe tomorrow? No. Until we sit down and talk? Can something happen now? Yes. Can a miracle take place now? Yes. Can the Lord turn all those ad ad advers adversities? Can he turn everything around right now? Yes. Is there healing available? Yes. Deliverance available? Yes. Provision available? Yes. Are you a candidate for miracle at this time? Yes. Why not if not? Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you at this time because we know you are a good God. You are a loving God. You are a mighty and a powerful God. With you all things are possible. You created this whole world out of nothing. And we know that you are still God. You remain ever the same. I pray for everyone here, O oh Lord. All those little foxes will die out of our lives in Jesus' name. The little foolishness and the little folly, oh Lord, I pray you cleanse everything away from every life in Jesus' name. And the little fire that we have kindled with our tongue, oh Lord, I pray, bring our tongues under control. Bring our language under control. And also the fire that is raging because of that little fire we kindled, put it off in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, your people are trusting you. I'm trusting, we're all trusting you together that every sickness will vanish away. That you put testimony in every mouth. Therefore, right now, Lord, I pray, every sickness, get out in Jesus' name. The pain, the infirmity, oh Lord, I pray you clear it away right now. Touch your people and turn everything around. I pray that mountains will move away. Impossibilities become possible. And all the attacks and all the fictions of the devil upon anyone here, upon your wife, upon your husband, upon your children. Oh Lord, I cancel everything in Jesus' name. Every work of the devil is destroyed. All the attacks and afflictions against the people of God, they are taken away in Jesus' name. Mountain, I command you in the life of every brother, every sister, every child here, get out in Jesus' name. And Lord, I bring the families to you. Those who are barren, those who are looking for children, there's no child. I pray miracle children has come. Miracle children have come. Oh Lord, fulfill it in Jesus' name. By this time next year, those barren families, you'll carry your miracle children to the convention in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those who are jobless. I pray that you provide just for them. Real, real good jobs. Provide for them in Jesus.